Hi, and welcome to Rooted in Faith, a Bible-centered homeschooling summit. My name is Gina Steffi, and today I'm going to talk to you about tent pegs and Christian womanhood, raising women for the next generation. Again, my name is Gina Steffi. I'm a wife, a mom, stepmom, teacher, digital marketer, friend, all those things. You know the drill. But mainly, I would want you to know that I'm saved by grace through faith, which is not of my own doing. It's a gift of God. And today, I want to talk to you about a Bible story. Now, this Bible story may be new to you, maybe a little shocking when you hear it. So just bear with me. Before I tell you the story, I want to tell you how I came to learn about this story. Our family, when my children were younger, we used to take part in a Bible study that was like a family Bible study. So moms, dads, kids, grandparents, Sunday school teachers, leaders in the church, we all got together in a, the home of one of the leaders of the church and we did a Bible study and we worked our way through the Bible. And for this one, we were working our way through the book of judges. Now, doesn't that sound like a fun Bible study? (laughs) And you know, when you have little kids, judges might be a little deep, So I wasn't sure how this was going to land, but the kids had done pretty well. And like the girls brought some crochet things to work on and the boys were drawing while they were listening. But this is the story that we heard. And this is Judges 4, 21 and 22. But J.L., wife of Heber, took a tent peg and took a hammer in her hand and went softly to him and drove the tent peg in his temple until it went down into the ground He was lying fast asleep from weariness, and he died. Then as Barak came in pursuit of Sisera, Jael went out to meet him and said to him, Come, and I will show you the man whom you are seeking. So he went into her tent, and there was Sisera lying dead with a tent peg in his temple. Now, if, you know, the mom and me thought, oh my goodness, what, you know, what's going to happen with this with the kids? But my oldest daughter, who I'm remembering right, I think she was like eight or nine at the time. We came out of there and she said, why have I never learned about JL? She was fierce. She just, you know, she was about it. And so she was really excited to learn about JL, which was kind of shocking to us. And then it became kind of a running joke in our family. Watch out, you'll bring out the JL in me. And so it's a positive thing as you'll come to see, but that is an unusual story if you've not read that in the Bible. So in Judges 4, 21 and 22, we see JL use a tent peg to defeat Sisera, an enemy of Israel. And while this might seem like an unusual story, it is, it carries a powerful message to us as women. The imagery of a tent peg represents a lot of things. It represents strength, stability, and decisive actions. It's not just about homemaking, obviously. It's about being a crucial support for God's plan. And I love that part. It's about being a crucial support for God's plans. Isaiah 54, 2 mentions tip pegs in the context of expanding one's territory. As Christian women, we're called to expand God's kingdom through our influence. And who are we influencing? Our husbands, our children, our friends, all those things I I used to identify myself in the beginning, wife, mother, stepmother, even my role as teacher, and even my role as digital marketer. Tent pegs expand my territory, um, expand God's kingdom through my influence. And I found that this metaphor beautifully illustrates how we as women can be anchors of faith and expand God's kingdom through our unique roles. And over the years, I've come to understand that Christian women, like tent pegs, provide essential stability and support for their families and communities. I firmly believe that true feminine strength comes from a deep-rooted faith in God. It's not about conforming to the world's standards, but about embracing our God-given design. In my experience and studies, I found that Christian womanhood involves, one, being firmly grounded in Scripture. It is our ultimate guide. It tells us about Jesus and his great love for us, God's mercy for us. Secondly, it's about cultivating a servant's heart, following Christ's example. 
years ago, there were those bracelets, what would Jesus do? Well, sometimes it doesn't really hurt to ask, what would Jesus do? And use what Jesus would do as a guide for what we should do. Thirdly, Christian womanhood involves embracing our role as helpers and nurturers. That's a high calling from God. You may not find yourself a mother in this life, but you may find yourself in roles where you can help and nurture. And lastly, developing practical skills to manage a godly household. It's a ministry. And I want to emphasize here that our roles as women are vital in God's plan. They're not secondary or less important than men's roles. They are essential and complementary. So let's take a look at some women as they're represented in the Bible. We have Priscilla, who was a teacher who taught men in Acts 18, 24, and 26. A woman evangelizes her whole town by sharing the good news in John 4, 39 through 41. Women were the first to know about and announce the resurrection of Christ, Matthew 8 or Matthew 28. Junia is a woman apostle who the apostle Paul deems excellent, Romans 16, 7. Then we have Jael. She kills a dangerous enemy in battle, Judges 4, 21. Deborah led the nation of Israel, Judges 4. Abigail disregarded what her husband said in order to do the right thing. She didn't just submit and pray. She was a woman of action. Lydia was a persuasive businesswoman and is saved. And as a result, her whole household is saved. Luke 1, 26 through 38. Anna was a prophet who spoke about Jesus to the crowd in the temple. Luke 2, 36 through 38. And an angel notifies Samson's mother first about her special son and important information. Again, we're back to Judges, Judges 13. And so as you can see, looking at these representations of women in the Bible, women are called to a wide variety of roles. So we're called to yield to the word of God. We're called to listen to what the Lord might be saying to us. And we're called to act in a way that Jesus would act. What would Jesus do? Let's talk about how we can apply the principles in homeschooling to raise strong Christian women. First and foremost, we need to prioritize Bible study and character development alongside academic subjects. Knowledge without godly character is an incomplete education. I encourage you to teach your daughters to view homemaking as a high calling. Equip them with practical skills that will serve them and their families. I was blessed when I was first married. Um, I could cook, but I wouldn't say I cook well. I'm still not a great cook, and I don't love cooking. It's like my least favorite. I'd rather do rounds of laundry than cook. And I can organize anything, and I would rather do that than cook. But my grandmother came to stay with me when I was newly married, and she saw um, the condition of my dishes and all of my microwave meals, and she sat me down at that time, and she said, I'm going to teach you how to grocery shop. And I'm going to tell you, I stayed home full time at that time and we did not have children, but she said, no one wants to come home to a dirty house and have to cook dinner. So I'm going to show you five or six meals you can make. And she was a homemaker and she had four children. So she was worthy to listen to and she taught me a lot. But those practical skills, our, our girls need that. Even if they never marry, they need to know how to, um, how to provide for themselves and possibly their community. It's crucial to teach our girls to think critically about cultural messages that can contradict biblical womanhood. The world will try to shape their views, and we, their moms, their parents, need to guide them to God's truth. We need to model and teach the importance of service, both within the family and in our broader community, cultivating that Christ-like heart. In my own homeschool journey, I found it valuable to intentionally cultivate traits like compassion, wisdom, diligence, and discretion. And these were all best taught through real life applications. Provide opportunities for your daughters to mentor younger children. This develops leadership skills and reinforces what they're learning. Let's remember the power of that tent peg metaphor in our lives and homeschools. We as Christian women, firmly rooted in faith, provide the stability and strength our families and communities desperately need. By embracing the biblical view of womanhood, we can raise a generation of women who are anchored in God's word, Jesus, John 1, 1, confident in their God-given roles. And we saw there are a wide variety of roles for us in God's big wide world. 
and see equipped to influence their world for Christ. Esther 414, who knows, but they were born for such a time as this. Thank you for joining me today for this brief look at Tent Pegs and Christian Womanhood. My name is Gina Steffi, and you can find me at True North Homeschool Academy. I teach entrepreneurship. I'm also the marketing director for True North and the marketing director for Ultimate Homeschool Podcast Network and the Ultimate Christian Podcast Network.